What's up guys, it's Brad from JBU Media here. Today I thought I'd just do a quick video on when to use two-dimensional compositing versus 3D CGI or computer generated imagery. So if you, if you know anything about that subject, go ahead and skip past this video. But uh, for those of you who don't know, you may find this video helpful. First of all, before we get started, we need to know the difference between two-dimensional compositing and 3D computer generated imagery. So 2D compositing is when you use a collection of images to overlay or place into your shot. Now, while these images can be uh, manipulated, uh, the pixels or information within them are constant throughout your shot. An example of 2D compositing would be something like a matte painting. Now, while you can project a two-dimensional image such as a matte painting onto 3D geometry so that its perspective matches a moving shot better, that doesn't make it CG. It's simply a 2D image projected onto geometry so that minor camera moves can be achieved within the shot. CGI, on the other hand, or computer-generated imagery, is an element that has its lighting and materials rendered and created within a computer itself. In other words, you create an entire 3D world that can be shot and lit like a scene in real life, except with lights, environment maps, and cameras within the computer itself. They're virtual lights, environment maps, and cameras. If the 3D lights and camera were to move around the 3D environment and the 3D element, the lighting and reflections and the overall image data that is output will change dramatically. Okay, so now that that is clear, we can get into when to use one technique or the other, when to use two-dimensional compositing versus 3D computer-generated imagery. There is a fine line of when you can use one or the other, but generally these are some of the guidelines that I follow based on my limited experience. Generally, I found that 2D visual effects work when your shot allows you to hide flaws in a two-dimensional element. This may mean that you can blur the element to hide certain flaws, or that the element is being added in the distance where perspective or lighting doesn't change very much. The main thing to keep in mind here is that if the perspective or angle of the camera changes too much, the audience would expect the part of the image that is two-dimensional to change based on the lighting. Even if you have a two-dimensional matte painting projected onto geometry, major camera movements will cause distortion and therefore create an unrealistic effect. Now, 3D CGI effects, when achieved properly, can work in the foreground or the background no matter where the camera is moving because objects within the scene can take into account the 3D lighting and materials that are given to them. If you recreate the environment around around the CG element in the computer, then as the virtual camera moves around it, lighting and shading should be accurate. It should be noted that even though CG effects can be added in the foreground or background of an image, they also take time to render. This is why two-dimensional effects are often used for adding distant elements to the shot where perspective doesn't change and why CGI objects with more dynamic lighting that can be used for moving shots are often used in the foreground. To sum this all up, 3D CGI is best for visual effects elements that the camera will move around and two dimensional compositing methods such as matte painting are best when perspective changes are minimal. Anyway, that's it guys. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The JBS Media Facebook page is in the description below if you want to like it there to get the latest updates, feel free to do so. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.